So life is good. No, life is fucking amazing. <laughs> and we live during the most extraordinary time ever in human history. If I have a superpower, if I could get a superpower, it would be to sort of share with you a view of what's going to happen in the next 20 to 30 years. So we're living in a time where I fundamentally believe there is nothing we cannot do. There's no problem on this planet we cannot solve. Nothing. Nothing. You know, a thousand years ago, the only people who could change anything were the kings and the queens. And all they could do was send out their troops and try and quell the crowds or change the monetary policy. A hundred years ago, it was the robber barons, the industrialists, the guys with the cash who could build the railroads, the steel mills, the, the libraries, the schools. Today, it's us, right? Today, each of us have the power to do anything we want, anything. If you've got the passion, if you've got the desire, if you know what the hell you want to do. That's the first step. What the hell do you want to do? Because today, each of us have access to the world's information, right? More information at our fingertips than the presidents of every nation on this planet had 20 years ago. You want computational power? You can spin up a thousand processor cores in AWS in a second. You want cash? More cash available today than any time ever. Right, $15 billion in crowdfunding last year, onwards to $100 billion in the next five years. The greatest explosion in you know, venture capital, in angel capital. Cash is not a limit. Either is technology. The power of AI and robotics and 3D printing. You can go from something in your mind to physically having it in your hand in minutes. So what the hell do you want to do with this power? because that's the world we're living in today. A fundamental world in which anything is possible. Now, the challenge we have is watching the news. Because when you're sitting at home or picking up a newspaper, it's dire. Or is it? And so this is something I'm on every podium talking about because if I can give you one gift, it's about changing your world back to that superpower of optimism. You see, we're living in the most extraordinary time ever in human history. Over the last hundred years, the per capita income for every nation on this planet has more than tripled. The human lifespan has more than doubled. It's about to double again. The cost of food has dropped 13-fold, energy's dropped 30-fold, transportation's 100-fold, communications a million-fold in price. My friend Steven Pinker at Harvard, in his book, The Better Angels of Our Nature, shows us we're living during the most peaceful time ever in human history. Now, you wouldn't know that watching the crisis news network or the constantly negative news network, whatever the hell you call CNN these days. <laughs> but look at the data. Look at the data. And when you do, you find out that there's a reason all this negative news comes to you. And I think of the news media as a drug pusher. And negative news is their drug. And you see, as we were evolving on the savannas of Africa hundreds of thousands and millions of years ago, if you missed a piece of good news, like life is good, well, too bad. If you missed a piece of bad news, like a rustle in the leaves is a lion and not the wind, your genes were out of the gene pool. And so we evolved an ancient piece of our temporal lobe called the amygdala. And it scans everything you see and everything you hear for negative news. And when it sees it, it puts you on red alert. Oh my God. And you pay 10 times more attention to negative news than positive news. And for that reason, we have CNN. We have our newspapers today. Good news networks fail. And their job, their job is to deliver your eyeballs to their advertisers. You see, there's no one standing outside the local high school this morning saying, hey, there was no school shooting here today. Or outside LAX saying, no airplane crashed here today. And so all you get all the time on a billion handset cameras around the world is every murder, every piece of negative news brought to you in living color over and over and over again in high definition. And it changes your mindset. 
oh my God, this world is falling apart. Should I even get out and drive here? Honestly, 35,000 people die in automobile classes in the United States. 1.25 you know, million around the world. But when you look at the data, oh my God, the last 100 years have been amazing. Amazing. A plummeting in the cost of, of education. A plumbing in the cost of everything. We're living in a world in the next 20 years where the poorest child on the planet and the child of a billionaire is going to have the same education delivered to them on AI. Where the poorest child on the planet and the child of a billionaire is going to have the same health care delivered to them through AI and robotics. We're living in a world of demonetization and democratization and dematerialization. I spend my time thinking about these things at the X Prize Foundation where we're launching these 10 and 20 and 30 million dollar prizes to invent things around the world. Uh, we're coming to the tail end right now of the Qualcomm Tricorder X Prize. The Qualcomm Foundation put up 10 million dollars for the team who could build a handheld device that any of you could use. It's not for a doctor or for a nurse. It's for a mom or a dad at 2 o'clock in the morning when your kid is sick. You can talk to it. You can cough on it, do a finger blood prick, and can diagnose you better than a team of board-certified doctors. 330 teams entered this $10 million X Prize. We're down to seven finalists. We'll have a, a winner by the end of this year. It's the Tricorder X Prize on the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, right? We're bringing the Tricorder to life. How cool is that? Thank you. But if healthcare, global healthcare is one of the most important things, the other surely is education. And we live in a world of a billion illiterate people. Two thirds of them are women, 250 million of them are kids. And they live in parts of the world, we will never build enough schools, we will never bring enough teachers. So it was about 18 months ago, we launched a $15 million X Prize. It was funded by Elon Musk, supported by Tony Robbins, the DeVos family, Scott Hassan, a number of amazing individuals. And this is an X Prize that asks a team to build a piece of Android software that can take a child in the middle of no place, from illiteracy to basic reading, writing, and numeracy in 18 months, right? Nothing. No literate adults, no schools, no nothing. You drop it there, and they have to pick it up, learn how to use it, and take them from illiteracy to basic reading, writing, and numeracy, where they can tap into the world's information. We've had over 600 teams enter this competition. About 130 are delivering software. We're going to narrow it down to five finalists who each get a million bucks. And then we're going to take those five finalists and put them on 5,000 tablets, 1,000 tablets each. Google donated those tablets. We're thankful to them for that. Those 5,000 tablets then go into Tanzania into villages, into families where we have gotten permission to give the kids this technology. Now we're going to monitor the impact on that child, on that child's family, and on the village. The winning software is then open sourced to the world. And here's the cool thing, right? I want you to imagine that every Android device manufactured is a teacher. So when, instead of throwing it in your drawer like I do, and I've got five phones in there that I haven't you know, found the time to give to somebody, imagine if you donate it, and a billion teachers a year are manufactured. That scale. But guys, you have no idea how fast things are going. There are companies I've invested in and working with right now that are truly on the cutting edge of nanotechnology, the ability to actually assemble, atom by atom, devices that can manufacture things. There's a company I advise that is working on brain-computer implants. Imagine being able to tap into your hippocampus and expand your ability to memorize anything. My friend Ray Kurzweil, with whom I co-founded Singularity University, speaks about something which is so extraordinary, it's hard to fathom. But when you stop and you realize, and you can go and look on this online, that Ray has an 83% accuracy rate on all of his predictions, it gives you pause. 
And his prediction is that in the early 2030s, let me give you a time check, it's 2016 right now, right? That's 15 years from now. We're gonna be able to interface your brain with the cloud. So what happens when all of a sudden, you know, I need a thousand times more memory capacity, or I need to process something really, really witty because Roman's about to come out on stage, and I can expand my capabilities. What is not possible when a human has that kind of potential, that kind of capacity? It doesn't stop there, right? Because the other thing that's going on right now, which blows my mind, is that we're going from a world today of 2.9 billion connected people to a world of 8 billion connected people in the next five, six years, right? You've got Facebook with drones and satellites. You've got Google with balloons and drones and satellites. You've got Qualcomm and Branson with satellites. You've got Elon with satellites. You've got all kinds of, you're gonna cover the globe and make it possible for anyone on the planet, no matter where they live, to have connectivity. I'm talking about connectivity like you and I had on AOL you know, at 9,600 baud. I'm talking about coming online, five billion new minds coming online at a megabit per second. If you don't think things are moving fast now, hold on. When five billion new people, these are new consumers who never bought anything, have never uploaded or downloaded. These are people who live in the world where there are real challenges. So we're heading towards a world of five billion new minds online. Maybe just $10 a day. We're talking about trillions of dollars flowing into the global economy. It's the longest tale of innovation ever. And these five billion people are not coming online just with you know, information. They're coming online with AWS and 3D printing and AI and robotics and whatever else they want. We're about to reinvent what this world is. We're gonna reinvent every business here over the next 20 years. We're gonna reinvent how we teach our kids, how we govern our nation, how we have healthcare, everything faster than you can possibly imagine. Oh, did I mention we're about to double the human lifespan again? One of the companies I'm proudest of is a company called Human Longevity. I co-founded with Craig Venter, sequenced the first human genome and another guy named Bob Hurry is a top stem cell scientist. And our mission is to add 30 to 40 healthy years in everyone's life. We built the world's largest genome sequencing facility in La Jolla. We've got a 40 person machine learning team up in Mountain View. And as we collect your 3.2 billion letters of your life and all your phenotypic data, and are able to understand what is going on, we are deciphering the human software code at a level of understanding like never before. Oh, and then there's my passion for space. A million years from now, 100,000 years from now, whenever it is, we're gonna look back at these next couple of decades as the moment in time that the human race moved off this planet irreversibly. It's right now. Right now, we're sowing the seeds to expand to become a multi-planetary species. We're gonna tap into the greatest wealth ever, the first trillionaires we made in space. We're going to be tapping into the vast amount of resources. You think anything is scarce? There is nothing truly scarce on this planet. For me, life is good. Life is very good, my friend. And it is an honor and a pleasure to be here because the other thing I realize is how rare these kinds of conversations are around the world. So as you're here, listening to the miracles of an amazing woman who goes from near death to a joyous world, to a brand that is reminding us of that. Remind yourself of one thing. There is nothing you cannot do. The only limitation is the passionate and driven human mind. An honor and pleasure, thank you for having me.